Hello everyone and welcome to the video, the first video of its kind on the channel. I think one thing that is missing in our community is how to actually even get started and what Pokemon are good if you are wanting to learn. So this video might be a bit basic for those of you PvP experts out there, but I do think it's important to highlight which Pokemon are the most viable and how to start building a team if you are newer to the game. So if this is you, make sure to stay tuned. Maybe throw me a like or a subscribe. That would also help uh, encourage me to make more of this content as well. And we are going to focus on the Pokemon that is the most prevalent in PvP, especially in the Show 6 Pick 3 formats, the Play Pokemon tournaments, but also you see it all the time in Go Battle League, and that is Metacham. So Metacham is dual typing, which means he is both fighting and psychic type. This is especially helpful because psychic is normally super effective against fighting, so being able to have this automatically makes Metacham a little bit better against the other fighters. As far as what fast attack you wanna be running on Metacham, that is going to be counter, and counter is a two turn move. If you don't understand what the two turns, uh, one turn, all that is yet, uh, I'll finish off this video with a little bit of a counting exercise as well, so stay tuned for that. But yes, counter is the, the fast attack of choice for Metacham, and then the possible charge attacks that you can be running are Ice Punch, Psychic, Dynamic Punch, and Power Up Punch. Now, Ice Punch and Psychic are the typical charge attacks that you will see on the Metacham, although there has been a rise of Dynamic Punch lately as well. And if you're looking to the very right of the charge attacks, you're also going to see how many counters it takes, so how many fast attacks it takes to able to get to that energy to throw each of these charge attacks. So the first Ice Punch would take six counters, the second one also six, the third also six, the fourth one only five. As you can see, Psychic is always eight counters, Dynamic Punch is eight for the first one, seven for the remaining, and Power Punch is always five as well. So what are some positive matchups for Metacham? Well, uh, since it is a fighting type, it is going to be really good against the Steel, the Ice types, Normal types, and Dark types. Uh, these are the Pokemon that you will most likely come across. There are definitely more that uh, Metacham can take on, but these are the ones that you will most likely see in some sort of battle scenario. Negative matchups for Metacham are going to be those that have the Ghost typing, Fairy typing, and Flying typing. Uh, a lot of them that you see in the Go Battle League or in the Show 6 Pick 3 format. And here are some interesting matchups that I want to go a little bit more in depth about. So Registeel, because it is a Steel type, you would think that it would not be doing so well against Metacham because those counters are doing some super effective damage to it. However, if Metacham is not running Dynamic Punch or Power Up Punch, uh, the Registeel can actually flip this matchup, especially if it comes in as the Safe Swap or Pivot position because it is able to get a few lock-on advantage as well. And if it gets that Zap Cannon debuff, then the Metacham's counters aren't doing as much damage overall as well. Metacham, if it is running the Ice Punch and Psychic, may lose the zero shields against the Registeel, can usually win the one shield scenario, Overall, this is more positive for the Metacham, but the Registeel does have some play in this as well. And another one that has also some play is Lickitung. Lickitung is a normal typing, but it is uh, very bulky. It has a very high defense and a very high HP. And its fast attack is Lick, which is a ghost type. So it's hitting back the Metacham for super effective damage as well, even though it is taking super effective from the counters. Depending on when it is switched in, it can also win that switch advantage that you're maybe looking for, or at least get a shield off of the opposing Metacham. Lickitung and Metacham together also make a very good core because they cover each other's weaknesses. Lickitung being able to fight back against uh, those ghost types because of its normal typing and protecting the Metacham from these ghosts. So another interesting matchup for that Metacham is going to be the Mandibuzz. Now Mandibuzz can run two different types of fast attacks and it really depends on the composition of the team that has the Mandibuzz on what attack it is running. More often than not, it is on Snarl, which is a dark type attack, which doesn't do that much to the Metacham, but is able to generate energy pretty quickly. Overall, if they're just throwing Aerial Aces, which is the more effective move against the Metacham, uh, it actually can come down to the Metacham winning by throwing straight Ice Punches in the One Shield scenario. If it is an Air Slash Mandibuzz instead of a Snarl, then it flips in the favor of that Mandibuzz. 
Another interesting matchup is that Venusaur. Venusaur overall with the Community Day Charge Attack of Frenzy Plant just hits like a truck. It only takes two of them to knock out the Metacham. Meanwhile, Metacham cannot knock out the Venusaur with only two Ice Punches. It needs to be able to land that Psychic to do so. Psychic is a super effective move against the Venusaur, however, so if it is able to land that, it basically one-shots the Pokemon, takes it out, so it can be a bit of a baiting game. Also, if it is a Shadow Venusaur, it takes 20% more damage while dealing out 20% more damage as well, so those Ice Punches would end up hurting, and theoretically, you could probably grab a shield from that Venusaur, even if they know it's just an Ice Punch because of how much more damage it will be doing over time. Swampert is another matchup like Venusaur, having its Community Day Charge attack of Hydro Cannon. Two of them will be able to knock out Metacham, and it also outpaces the Metacham to be able to get to these as well. However, Swampert is pretty frail in the Great League, so it is taking a lot of damage from the counters, and the Ice Punches will add up over time. You will need to land the Psychic to be able to take it out in the One Shield scenario. That is the way the Metacham would win that. Uh, so it is another one of those matches that is a bit of a baiting game. Another interesting matchup for the Metacham, and again, depending on your own Metacham's movesets, if you're also running a Dynamic Punch or Power Up Punch, it changes it a little bit, is against that Carbink. Carbink is a part fairy, so because of this, uh, the Moon Blast that it could be throwing as its charge attack will be doing heavy amounts of damage to the Metacham. However, because Carbink is also Part rock, the counters are going to be doing more damage than if it was just a solid fairy typing. Also, because of this, if the Carbank is on rock throw, the fast attacks aren't going to be doing too much to that Metacham overall, it, and if the Metacham is up shields, it's definitely a winnable scenario. And the last Pokemon, it doesn't sound like it would be that interesting, uh, being a mirror matchup, but it is because it really depends on how people like to play that out, and especially if the Metacham is running a different moveset. If it's running Ice Punch and Dynamic Punch, if it's running Ice Punch and Power Up Punch, I've, I've seen it before. But the main reason this is an interesting matchup is something that has recently been discovered by a player named It's Axon, who actually was the 2023 Pokemon Go World Champion and played a Metacham with certain IVs, uh, the IV spread that we are now calling a Metacham Slayer. So these IVs are Metacham Slayer IVs, and you can be running Ice Punch and Dynamic Punch. Go straight Ice Punch against your opponent, no need to throw the Psychic, because you're doing more damage and you're also taking less damage from their Metacham. And while we're on the subject of IVs, you're looking for the rank one, the best IVs that you can get for Great League, that is going to be the 5-15-15. Metacham, because of its actual total CP, is not actually viable in Ultra League and not in Master League either. However, the Mega Metacham could be viable in Master League, and for that, you're looking for the 15, 15, 15. Or the Hundo, as we call it. So I said at the beginning that Counter is a two-turn move, and we would talk about what this means. So basically, there are different turn durations, and we'll talk about the optimal timing after your opponent throws their charge attack, how many counters you should do before throwing your own charge attack if you have it. So optimal timing against one turn fast moves are actually pretty difficult because, because it's a one turn, they're always going to go ahead and get their attack through. The only time this does change is if you're throwing on charge attack priority, which means when you're throwing at the exact same time, and then whoever has the higher attack will be the one who is throwing first. So what are some Pokemon that have one turn attacks that the Metacham might be facing? Those are the Lock-Ons from the Regis, or actually any Pokemon that is running Lock-On. Lick is also a one turn fast move. Tackle, the Ursaluna, the Carbink if it's not on Rock Throw, and also the new Pokemon that I forgot its name, I'm gonna look it up right now. Oinkalone, Oinkalone. Okay, Oinkalone. <laughs> Water Gun is another one turn fast attack. Fury Cutter, and then what we see quite often is a Dragon Breath, right? Dragon Breath is like one of the more oppressive, heavy hitting one turn moves. And then Bug Bite, which we don't see too often, but if we do, it is probably gonna be on the Araquanid, the Wormadam, or the Fortress. So again, if you're against a one turn fast attack, the only time that you do not let them get an extra fast move through is 
unfortunately, at those charge attack priority events. Also, for two turn attacks, this is true because counter is also a two turn attack. So unless you are aligned and throwing on that charge attack priority, they're always going to get an attack through. But on the plus side, you're also going to get an attack through every time they throw a charge attack. Two turn fast attacks are actually some of the most used in the game, especially right now. So we'll go over the ones that are most common, and that would be Powder Snow, Wing Attack, super popular right now, especially in the Show 6 Pick 3 format. Mud Shot, Spark is super common, but only on one Pokemon, and that is that Lantern. Shadow Claw being Trevenant, Alone Sand Slash, who also could be running Powder Snow. That has been happening more and more often as well. And then we also have Sableye and the Kofagrigus. Rock Throw is the Carbon, Vine Whip. You've seen it a lot more lately, that Superior, Venusaur, and also a possibility for Chestnut, and Psycho Cut, which is on the Cresselia. Okay, here's where the math comes in and it gets a little more interesting. So optimal timing against a three turn fast attack is after they throw a charge, you would do either one counter, four counters, seven counters, or 10 counters before throwing your own. And this is just optimal timing, which means that they will not be able to get another fast attack and more energy through when you're throwing your charge attack. So what are some of these three turn attacks? It is going to be Bubble, Snarl, Air Slash, which is also could be on the Mandibuzz, or on the Pidgeot or Skarmory. Charm, that, oh, that Charm. Trust me, we've seen a load of Charmers, right? Uh, Dragon Tail, which is different than Dragon Breath. You have to look at the animation. Smackdown, Waterfall, and Ice Shard, which is on Dugong and Lapras. And again, there are more Pokemon that learn these attacks. These are just the ones that I think are most commonly found in Show 6 Pick 3 or in Go Battle League. If there are more restricted metas, you will definitely find some more restricted fun and spicy picks. Optimal timing after a four turn fast attack would be at one, three, five, and seven. So some of the four turn attack users are going to be Pokemon that learn Confusion, ones that are learning Volt Switch like Ampharos, Alolan Graveler, Alolan Golem, Magnezone, Vicavolt, and Galvantula, and Gust users like Pidgeot. And there's really only one five turn fast attack in the game right now, and that is Incinerate. And after an Incinerate user uses their attack, you either want to do two counters or seven counters before doing a charge attack of your own. And that's all we have for the most meta Pokemon meta champ right now. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you have a Pokemon that you would be interested in learning more about, also let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.